Okay, so now we'll be discussing about power in an AC circuit. Okay, so there are three types of power in an AC circuit. So first, we we have the real power. So that is the the actual. Okay, so it's So the real power is the actual power consumed by the load. Okay. Then we have the uh, reactive power. Reactive power. So that is the uh, that is the power. Um, the power that is uh, we could say that is taken by the inductive or slash capacitive load we could say that one and we have also the uh, apparent power so this is the apparent power okay so the apparent power is the capacity of the system. Okay, so that is the three types of power. So we have real power, reactive, and apparent power. So the real power, that is the actual power consumed by the load. Then the reactive power is the power taken by the inductive or the capacitive load. And the apparent power is the capacity of the system. Okay, so in order for us to... Uh, have the relationship of these uh, three quantities or is three types of power okay so we will write a so-called um, power triangle so it is different from the power triangle that we have in the uh, last video okay so we just have here a triangle this it is different from the power triangle in the AC circuit, uh, the DC circuit. So the power triangle that I have discussed on that topic is the formula itself on how to manip manipulate the formula. So it is uh, likely a technique. Also, it is more of a technique. But this one, this is a power triangle showing the relationship between real, reactive, and apparent power. So let's just first draw a triangle. Okay. Let's just cut this one okay then we will write the uh, angles this is a right triangle so this is a 90 degree angle so that these two angles here are acute angles so we have here s then we have q and we have P, okay so this SQ and P stands for well first we go to P that is the real power so this is P in our triangle then the reactive power this is Q Q uh, let's uh, write that one legibly then uh, s is the apparent power okay so this is s okay so if we uh, interpret the triangle if we are we we are going to analyze the triangle using trigonometric uh, functions or using the theorem of pythagoras so uh, pythagorean theorem so we could say that our S is our hypotenuse, so we could say that apparent power is equal to the square root of the sum of the square of our real power, so we, that is P squared, plus the square of the reactive power, which is Q. So this is one of the relationship of the three uh, types of power in an AC circuit. So, in order for you to get the apparent power, so you, you just get the 
square root of the p squared plus q squared the square root of the real power plus the i don't know the square root of the real power square plus the reactive power square and you will get the apparent power okay then in an ac circuit the real power is the power which is um which is consumed mainly by the resistance or the resistive load so therefore we could say that power in an ac circuit this is equivalent to i squared times r so you could derive this formula using the power triangle on a dc circuit so this is the actual formula for the real power and the reactive power so this is equivalent to still i squared but this power is consumed by the inductive or the capacitive load so the inductive or the, ca the capacitive load they are quantified using the reactance so therefore this will be the reactance or the equivalent reactance we just have that one as x so this is now how we will going to get the uh, real power and the reactive power for the units so the real power the unit for real power so you just write this one in here units so the unit for real power is watts okay watts so the symbol for watts is w now the unit for reactive power so reactive power the unit for reactive power is volt ampere reactive so the shortcut for volt ampere reactive is var so that is the symbol for volt ampere reactive now for apparent power this is volt Ampere. The shortcut for this one, the symbol for this one is V A. Okay. So let's uh, compare the power in an AC circuit and in a DC circuit. Okay. So if we are going back to, let's write this one in blue. Maybe we could. Um, have some space below okay this one so if we are going back to the dc so the recurrent dc power so our power still the symbol is p is equal to v times i so this is this the main formula for power in a DC circuit so the unit of this one is watts now for an AC circuit or a circuit supplied by an alternating current so AC power so we still have the formula V times I so it is still um, it is still uh, applicable but it is not the power that we know from DC because the power in DC the V times I this is equal to watts now in AC this is now called volt ampere Volt ampere is the unit, and this is now is the apparent power. So that is the difference between DC power and AC power. We still have the V times I, 
but in the DC power, it is watts. In the AC, that is volt ampere. So if we are going to get the um, power, the real power in watts in an AC circuit, it is equal to V times I. Then we have the so-called PF or the power factor. Okay. So the concept of the power factor is uh, is very easy to understand. We're going back to our triangle. So, for example, we have an angle here, theta. Okay. So, the what is the trigonometric relationship between P and your S? So, we could say that in terms of tri trigonometric function, so cosine, just right here, cosine theta is equal to so cosine that is adjacent this is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse so we could say this is equal to p times s okay if we are going to to um, interpret this one or to manipulate this one so for example we are going to solve for p so p is equal to s times cosine theta now your s going back to this formula your s is equal to v times i so we could say that p is equal to v times i cosine theta so comparing these two this two formulas this one and this one so they are identical so your cosine theta is your power factor so the so we have now the definition for power factor so power factor so that is defined as the ratio of D, this one, the P, because this is cosine theta, this is the PF. We just write this one here. So we can call this one the cosine theta also as PF. Okay? So this is real power, the ratio of the real power to the apparent power. Okay? So we'll write, continue writing here the definition. The ratio of the real power to the apparent power so other definition will say the ratio of the true power to the apparent power so real and true power is the same quantity so it is the it is the power in watts which is present in an ec circuit so that is now our power factor so our power factor so we just write clearly here the formula so power factor pf is equal to cosine theta which is equal to real power over apparent power okay now we'll go to types of pow power factor okay so types of power factor So first, we have unity power factor. We just write unity PF. Okay? So it is uh, characterized if the voltage and the current are in phase. So going back to the discussion about the behavior of R, L, and C circuit. So, the passive device that will have the voltage and the current in phase is the resistance or if our circuit is consist of a resistor. Therefore, unity power factor, our load will be a pure 
just right here below so our load will be a purely resistive resistive load okay so if our load is a purely re resistive load we have a unity power factor the value of our pf unity so unity meaning one so the value of our pf is equal to one so the ratio between the the apparent power and uh, between the real power and the apparent power is equal to one so in other words the capacity of our system is equal to the real power of the system or we could write this one if the if the power factor is unity we could write that our real power is equal to our apparent power so that is unity power factor now we will go to another type of power factor lagging pf or lagging power factor so it is defined if the current lags the voltage by an acute angle okay so lagging power factor of course or characterized when the current lags the voltage by an acute angle so if we go back also to the behavior of rlc circuit okay so maybe i could uh, draw the topic in this uh, notebook okay here that is behavior okay so we go back so takes a current that lags the voltage across it by 90 electrical degrees so that is an ideal inductor so the current lags the voltage by 90 degrees so if we go back to this definition or to this characteristic of a lagging power factor the current lags the voltage by an acute angle so that the difference between an acute angle and a 90 electrical degrees so an acute angle is less than 90 electrical degrees so therefore we will have a lagging power factor if our load is consists of a or of d it will be consisting of so the load r a resistive load and an inductive load so if our circuit has or if our system has a resistive load then it is coupled or it all the circuit also contains an inductive load our power factor will be a lagging power factor so meaning the current lags the voltage by an acute angle so in in to make this one sh uh, much easier to remember if there is an inductive load on a circuit your power factor will always be lagging okay so it is uh, because the inductor going back to the behavior of R, L, and C circuit will make the voltage, I uh, will make the current lag the voltage by 90 electrical degrees. So, if there is an inductive load, then no matter if there is a larger amount of resistive load present on your system, your power factor will still be lagging and your current will also lag the voltage by an acute angle so if your load is purely inductive load your power factor is lagging but the angle now is equal to or the power factor angle is equal to 90 degrees okay now we go to another type of power factor we have the leading 
LPF or the leading power factor. So the, the current leads the voltage by an acute angle. Okay? So if we have if a circuit the current leads the voltage by a certain angle then going back to the behavior of R, L, and C circuit then your load must contain if the current is leading so the load R of course we have a resistive load and a capacitive load because if the load is an ideal capacitor your current leads the voltage by 90 degrees or 90 electrical degrees so that is leading power factor okay so the lead uh, the leading power factor your load has a capacitive load lagging power factor your load has an inductive load so we can now say that these two type of lagging factor is uh, power factor is somewhat opposite to each other so if the load is inductive the current will lag the voltage if the load is capacitive the current will lead the voltage so later on if we were going to go to power factor correction so there is a concept in which if we are going if we are aiming to make our power factor leading then the condition of the system is has a lagging power factor we we'll just add capacitive load in order to compensate our inductive load so it is um somewhat uh, tedious to solve for that one but the but the concept is just very simple we add a capacitive load to 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 counteract or to compensate the inductive load so that's why in power systems so our inductive load the example of inductive load is our motors um machines that has um that that has uh that operate in electromagnetic induction so that will co that, that will uh, co that will uh th that is the uh, those are the inductive load in our system so um in a certain power system so for example if the if a if a if a certain system supply uh uh, manufacturing plant so the, manuf the man manufacturing plant has um, machines so it, it uh, that plant will have motors so therefore the power factor of that system supplying the, the manufacturing plant will be lagging so and a lagging power factor is that good in a system especially if that value of the lagging pf um falls below what is um uh, what is required or what is the standard for that distribution system so that's why they will the the the, the distribution utility or the the power provider will uh, make a capacitor bank so the capacitor bank will compensate the inductive load from the machines or from the motors of the manufacturing plant in order to raise the power factor of the system so that is uh, somewhat the example or the uh, the application of uh, leading of the lagging and leading power factor concepts now we'll have the last type of power factor so this is zero power factor okay so zero power factor so the voltage and the current are out 
of face by exactly 90 degrees. Okay. So, as I said a while ago, so if your load is purely inductive load, so you will have a lagging power factor which is 90 electrical degrees. Lagging. If your load is purely capacitive load, you will have a leading power factor equal to 90 degrees. So those two falls under the type of power factor which is called the zero power factor. So why is it called zero? So the, the definition says that the voltage and the current are out of phase by 90, uh, by exactly 90 electrical degrees. So going back to the definition of power factor, so power factor is equal to cosine theta. Our cosine theta here, this is the power factor angle. So this is what we mean as by an acute angle or by 90 electrical degrees. So in a zero power factor, the the current and the voltage is are out of phase by 90 degrees. So our power factor angle is 90. So if we are going to substitute 90 to theta, so we will have cosine 90. So cosine 90, if we are uh, going to calculate that in our calculator, so let's have here our calculator, cosine 90. So we'll just ch check first if we are in degrees. Okay, so that is in degrees. The answer is equal to zero. So that's why it is called zero power factor. Okay, so we'll go back to unity power factor. So it is called unity power factor because your power factor is one. Now, you may ask, so if the power factor is one, what is the power factor angle? So going back to the definition or to the a characteristic of a unity power factor the voltage and the current are in phase meaning in phase they are along the same line so meaning their power factor or the power factor angle is equal to zero so their theta let's just put here so their theta is equal to zero and cosine zero okay so if you are going to calculate to get to calculate that one, so cosine zero is equal to one. So that's why it is called unity power factor. Okay. So we will be solving problems related to this topic: power, AC power, and the concept of power factor.